The opening scene shows us a frantic man in a house that is trashed. He's watering a tree in his backyard that's almost completely dead, except for a single branch with a few green leaves hanging on for dear life. As the camera zooms into his face, the man turns around and we see his mouth has been tapped. If he speaks one more sentence, he will die. But how did he end up in this situation? Well, watch on to find out. <laughs> The scene shifts back a few weeks ago. Jack McCall is a literary agent whose job is to find talented writers and sell their books to publications. Jack is an amazing businessman and an even more talented talker. He is known among his colleagues for being able to talk anyone into doing anything. Jack also has a beautiful wife, Caroline, and a one-year-old son who he loves dearly, but he often neglects his family for work. Caroline is used to taking care of her baby on her own and is tired of her husband's nonchalance towards his family duties. One morning, in his office, Jack finds out that a famous spiritual guru, Dr. Sinya, is in the city. A book written by him would definitely be a super hit and bring in a lot of money, which piques Jack's interest. He pitches the idea to his team, who are skeptical if a spiritual leader will sign a deal with them. But Jack reminds them how amazing his skills of persuasion are. The very next day, he books a meditation session with Dr. Sinja in hopes of meeting him. However, when it comes to the actual meditation, he is unserious and distracted. Just when the session is about to end, Jack pretends to be overwhelmed and is taken aside by Dr. Sinja himself. As they chat, Jack cleverly tells him that he wishes to spread the doctor's work to the world in the form of a book. Dr. Sinja realizes Jack's intentions and walks into his backyard, uninterested in his offer. The backyard has a sacred Bodhi tree, which gives Jack a splinter when he tries to touch it. The men dismiss the tiny wound and continue talking about Jack's offer. After he explains how much he respects Dr. Sinja and his teachings, the guru finally agrees to work with him. A thrilled Jack cancels his schedule for the rest of the day to visit his mother and tell her about his recent success. She lives in an old age home and has dementia, which causes her to frequently misname her son. Jack had never had a good relationship with his late father, Raymond. Hence, when his mother calls him by his father's name, he is visibly upset. The day gets even worse for him in the evening when he and Caroline get into an argument. Caroline wants to move into a family-friendly neighborhood so their son can grow up in a better environment. But Jack doesn't want to leave the bachelor pad they live in. He instead suggests they paint the studio room to turn it into a kid's nursery. In the middle of the argument, the couple feels the ground shaking. Within seconds, the entire house starts moving, and a Bodhi tree grows out of nowhere in the backyard. Jack looks at the magnificent tree, dumbfounded, and realizes that it looks identical to the tree that gave him a splinter. It even has the red mark that the original tree had. He eventually comes to the conclusion that Dr. Sinja sent it to him as a gift. The following morning, Jack is thrilled to receive Dr. Singe's book that he thinks will make him millions. However, his plan is in vain. When he finds out the book is only five pages long, assuming that Dr. Singe is playing a joke on him, Jack goes to his ashram only to find out that the spiritual leader wants to keep the book short. He argues that this is a breach of contract, but Dr. Singe remains adamant in his decision. As they chat, Jack brings up the tree in his backyard, which piques Dr. Singe's interest. They go to his house to check it and see that a branch has no leaves while the rest of the tree is green. After inspecting it for a while, Dr. Sinja comes to a shocking revelation. Jack's life is now tied to the tree. Every word he speaks will cause a leaf to shed, which means when there are no more leaves left, his life will end as well. Checks out. Jack freaks out and tries to axe the tree down, but ends up hurting only himself. This is when it is revealed that if the tree is harmed, Jack will suffer with it. He has no way to save himself other than to stop speaking entirely. Dr. Sinja promises to help him after consulting his colleagues in Bolivia, but even that will take three days. The next morning, Jack wakes up from a nightmare and tries to leave a note for his wife. It doesn't take him long to find out that every word he writes will also make a leaf fall. In fact, if he tries to communicate with anyone in any way, the tree will reciprocate. In the following scene, he hopelessly goes to work and comes across several hurdles in the way because of his new disability. The barista gives him wrong orders of coffee, and he causes an accident trying to save a blind man. However, the day only gets worse for him at work when he is introduced to an important investor who he cannot talk to. As he tries to get through the conversation, two squirrels start climbing up the tree at home. As a result, Jack feels ticklish and starts laughing, making a fool out of himself. Later that day, he brings his assistant Aaron to a meeting, hoping that he can communicate with the investors. In the middle of it, Jack sweats profusely because of the tree being watered at home. The investors try to ignore the elephant in the room, but the meeting ends in a disaster because of Aaron 
Karen's lack of communication skills. After a long day, when Jack finally reaches home, Caroline tries to talk to him about their relationship. She takes his silence as anger, causing a bigger argument and walking out with the baby. Within only a day of living with the curse, Jack has lost his biggest investors and his family is hanging by a thread. The reality of it all hits him like a storm, making him feel helpless. He tries calling Dr. Sinja in Bolivia for an update and wastes several leaves, but doesn't get an answer. The next day, Caroline makes a final attempt to salvage their marriage by calling Jack to a hotel room for a steamy night. He sees her waiting for him in lingerie and excitedly enters the room. But things start going downhill soon when Caroline asks him if he loves her. All Jack can say is the word yes, which pushes Caroline to leave him for good. Right after, Jack has to go to yet another meeting with the investors who he blew yesterday. <laughs> he blew? This is the final chance he has to impress them and apologize for the previously failed meeting. Although nervous, Jack does his best to fit in, but luck just doesn't seem to be working on his side. At home, the gardener sprays pesticides on the Bodhi tree. This causes Jack to cough uncontrollably. Nonetheless, his boss tries to keep the meeting going before Jack gets high on the chemical and stuffs her nose with a stick. This acts as the last straw for the investors who no longer want to associate with someone so childish. After the meeting, Jack's boss fires him, making sure he is blacklisted from the industry. At the end of the day, he frustratedly goes home and calls his assistant Aaron over. Using a picture, he tries explaining the situation to the poor Aaron, who finally gets it after several hours. When he refuses to believe the curse exists, Jack has to waste more words to prove himself. After that, he keeps Aaron in charge of observing the tree and goes around the city doing random acts of kindness. He feeds the poor, donates to a church, and helps a cat stuck in a tree, all while on the phone with Aaron. But nothing breaks the curse. Eventually, Aaron has to go back to the office and Jack is left alone again. He helplessly sits in front of the tree and meditates. When relaxed, Jack imagines his childhood. He remembers how he had a happy family until his father left his mother and abandoned him. Even years later, he has not been able to forgive his father for his deeds, and it has always bothered him. Suddenly, Jack wakes up from the relaxed state and finds out Dr. Sinja is back in town. With eyes full of hope, he rushes to meet the guru, only to be told that nothing can be done about the situation. Dr. Sinja has asked every enlightened guru he knows, but no one has an answer. At this point, all he can say is that Jack has to make peace with something within himself to break the curse, losing all will to live. Jack returns home and resorts to drinking. Aaron comes to his rescue and tries helping him, but Jack has decided to end his life by singing to a song. The tree loses most of its leaves before Aaron knocks Jack out and sticks duct tape over his mouth. As the camera pans towards the tree, we see that only one branch of leaves are left. The next morning, Jack wakes up knowing that it is his last day on Earth. He listens to his heart and knows exactly what he wants to do with the last few words he has left to speak. First, he goes to Caroline and tells her he loves her. He then helps a struggling writer who he has been ignoring for months by buying his work for $10,000. Next, he goes for a walk on the beach and observes people living their lives. An old couple, talking about their love life, reminds him of his childhood. Finally, when it starts to get dark, he goes to his mother. She mistakes him for his father again, but this time, Jack goes along with it. He listens as she happily reveals how successful her son is and how proud she is of him. However, there is one thing she doesn't like about Jack. He has too much hatred in his heart, and he refuses to let go of it. She knows that he is suffering because of the grudge he holds against his father and believes it is time for him to let it go. Although Jack cannot speak, he is still left speechless. He finally understands that no matter the amount of success he achieves, he will never be happy until he forgets gives his father. Determined to do the right thing, Jack tells his mother that he loves her, leaving only the last three leaves on the tree. In the following scene, Jack goes to his father's grave, and in a moment of epiphany, tells him that he forgives him. With his last words spent, there are no leaves left on the tree. Consequently, a sharp pain hits his chest, and he falls to the ground. A few seconds later, his phone starts ringing, and he picks it up with all his remaining strength. On the other end, Aaron tells Jack he won't believe what just happened. The tree is magically green again, and the curse is broken. The scene changes to a few months later. Dr. Sinja calls Jack to his ashram to congratulate him on writing a book. It is called A Thousand Words and is about Jack's story and his relationship with his father. After the curse was broken, he has turned into a different person. He is now a family man who is genuinely happy with his life. In the meantime, Aaron has taken Jack's place in the office and is as arrogant as his boss was. He is soon about to learn his own lesson, which he will get from the Bodhi tree that magically appears in his office. Somewhere else, Jack surprises Caroline 
Caroline by getting her the house she really wanted in an area where their child can have a good life. He has planted a Bodhi tree in the yard to remember the lessons he has learned. The movie ends as the couple plays with their child in their new house. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.